over 52% of the teens in our survey who were having sex admitted that they do not use protection. In this day and age, with so many STDs and people still dying of AIDS, 52% of those kids said they, and women said they do not, teens, excuse me, said that they do not use protection. Um, but how many of you guys here are having unprotected sex? Again, a majority. There's two girls, one virgin, and are you sexually active? Yeah. So you're active but protecting? Of course. Okay, so moms in the audience, shocked? Yes. Yes, very shocked. Oh, I can imagine. Okay, Justine, how many partners have you had? I've had nine partners. Nine partners. <laughs> and how old are you? Sixteen. Sixteen years old with nine partners? How old were you when you lost your virginity? Thirteen. Thirteen years old? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So tell me about your issues with safe sex. One night I was experimenting with ecstasy and I was talking to this older boy and... First of all, that's another issue. Yeah. The drugs, which we'll get to. That's mm -hmm. not something I'm just going to let float by, but go yeah. on. And um, things happen and he has to take off the condom and I kept saying no, but finally I'd given into it. And why did you give in? I, it, I don't want to blame it on the drugs. I really don't because it was my decision. Um, he just kind of manipulated me into it that night. Okay, and so? Um, a few days after that, you know, I just didn't feel right down there. So um, I had my mom take me to the doctor because I had actually lied to her and told her that I just felt like I had a urinary tract infection. Um, and I went back to the doctors alone and they checked me and I, had, I did have a urinary tract infection. I also had a yeast infection. Um, a disease called trick. It's mm -hmm. an STD. Um, it's short for something, but it's basically little mites that cause a disease, but they give you a shot and that's gone within 24 hours. But it's still serious, even though a shot it's makes very it go away. Common. It's very common. Okay. Um, and they also had diagnosed me with HSV2 and... Which HS, what's HSV2? It stands for herpes simplex virus type 2, so it's genital herpes. And how old were you when you were diagnosed with herpes? Um, I was 15. 15 years right old. Right before my 16th birthday. Um, the so now you have part, to live with it forever. Yeah. Yeah. The hardest part for me... It's okay. It's okay. The hardest part was um, when they told me I, I was crying really bad. I was really worried because it was something I have to live with for the rest of my life. And the hardest part was sucking in all the tears and acting like everything was fine and going out to my mom and pretending like nothing was wrong. Mm -hmm. But you told your mom? Um, eventually, a few months later, I went a while without telling anyone, which wasn't smart. And so. do you know who gave it to you? Yes, I do. And what did he say when you gave it, to, that he gave it to you? I actually, I never confronted him about it. I've always been scared. You haven't confronted him? Do you understand that by you not confronting him, he's spreading that to so many other people? And other people are spreading it to other people, and it could literally affect millions of people? Do you understand how the sex chain works? Yeah. Okay. Oh, definitely. So now. that his strain can affect millions of people by him not knowing. You understand that? Yeah. Although if it's warts or something, I'm sure he does know. But he might not know. You understand? Some guys yeah. are kind of like dumb. Like, yeah. oh, there's some stuff down there. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Do you understand, though? It's really important that you tell him yeah. because you're getting help for yourself and he needs to get help for himself because I know you're on medication right now. Yeah. Okay, to suppress yeah. the outbreaks. Okay. Um, our survey found that one in three sexually active teens thought they had an STD. One in three. That's 33 and a third percent of teens. Now, I understand somebody else paid a price for having unprotected sex. Who's that? Tia? Yes. Tell me about you. I had unprotected sex for, with a couple different guys, and I contracted chlamydia. I went to the doctor and... Chl so you said you had unprotected, unprotected sex with a couple of different guys. How many yes. guys? Um, at the time, it was like three. Three guys? Yes. 
And, and you went to the doctor, and he said you had what? I tested positive for chlamydia. You tested positive for chlamydia. Within the first year. You know, this is so amazing to me because we hear about diseases. We know as adults about these diseases, but I don't think about chlamydia and herpes for 13-year-old and 14- and 15-year-old kids. That, to me, is like... And it's crazy to me to, to know that you, and you look like a little baby. All of you guys look like children. Like children, and you're talking about chlamydia. They are children. I'm talking about they look even younger than they are to me. It looks like this is 10 year old talking about chlamydia. So you got chlamydia, but then you all started to notice something else. What did you start to notice? Well, after I got chlamydia the first time, I was still having unprotected sex. You still, start, you still were having unprotected sex? Yes. Why? And Mm, I don't know. Did you get lost in the moment? Most of the guys didn't want to. If I said something about it, then they would just sort of blow it off and just act like they didn't hear me. And or, then so you would say, okay, they, they're acting like they don't hear me, so I'm just going to have unprotected sex. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the guys, if I didn't um, have unprotected sex with them, they would get mad at me, and I still wanted that closeness with them. And okay. I still wanted to feel like, you know, they were my friend. I was afraid if I didn't do what they wanted, then I wouldn't be their friend. And so I went um, a year later, and I tested positive for chlamydia again. And again? Chlamydia again? Yes. And that time when I got tested, I also tested positive for herpes. So now you have herpes? Yes. I went to the doctor, and I noticed blisters coming up. and. I went to the doctor and they first told me that it was just cyst. And then I went to another gynecologist and they was telling me it was warts. They never knew. Like a year later I went and I got a blood test done and I tested positive for um, herpes in my mouth and in my genitals. In and your mouth and your genitals? Yes. Is that because you were having oral sex as well with this guy? No. It just has I've never in your bloodstream. Yeah. And why do you talk about it so normal? It bothers me, but, you know, I know that I have to live with it, and I don't know. It sounds like you're just saying, you know, and then I went to the store, and I bought some candy, and then I went down the street, and my friend said, can I have some, and I said no, and it sounds like you're just talking about something. I've talked to a lot of people about it, and I'm ashamed that I have it, but it's not, I mean, it's something I want other people to be aware of. Your mother is here. Where's your mother? Hi. Hi. Why do you think your daughter talks about this in such a normal way, in a blasé way? Because it doesn't even sound like she's warning people to me. It just sounds like, ah, oh, this happened. Well, when, when an incident happened like that, you know, when she told me, her and I are very close. So when she initially told me, um, I wasn't out to, you know, find the guy, report this, report that, you know. It, if you have something and you know what you have, then the best thing to do is treat it, try to stop it. Her and I have a very close relationship and it's by far nonchalant. I mean, she lives with it every day. She goes to the, the pharmacy, gets her meds every day. Every How does time. it make you feel as a mother? As a mother, I with feel as, uh, as though if I failed. I was angry, um, knowing that she wasn't having a, a tremendously active sex life um, with only a couple of sex partners you know you you never think you know any any parent I think here today would probably say no that's not my little girl or you know that couldn't happen to my little girl but it does that's reality you just have to make the best of it that you so can. as a mom you say that you feel like you failed as a mom yeah, I don't think I, you I failed think, as a mother. I think this I, part is a is a very big issue. But I think to say you failed as a mom is I failed as a mom. As in, she she told you she was upset with me. Um, we had a hard time in our life. I lost my mom the same year that all this happened, and you know I was I was spread this way and that, and so I think she was you know trying to get back to me with me, you know as as a mom daughter relationship that I was sort of at a, a hard time there trying to get back to her because of loss of What are you my doing mind. now to uh, make a change with her? Because she's obviously starving for affection and attention from these um, guys. There's something lacking in her life. So what are you doing as a mom to... Well, after my mom passed, um, she was always promised, you know, once I had that one person taken out of this world, one person coming up, you know. Her and I have had a great two years together, or almost two years now. And we are just like best friends. She tells me everything. I tell her everything. Um, she has a lot okay. of respect for me as well as me having respect for her. Okay, thank you.